I'd like to use the next 11 minutes to talk briefly about adding a new layer to your network security strategy and about high-performance packet capture. Today, with over 1,100 customers worldwide, SolarFlare is used in nearly every electronic exchange for their market data feeds and order processing. Also, many large banks utilize SolarFlare technology within their dark pools and automated trading groups. Finally, the majority of high-frequency trading shops all use SolarFlare to lower their trading latency. This is a typical layered defense architecture. SolarFlare will show that you may want to add a new security layer at the server edge by leveraging a network server adapter with hardware filtering capability. A high-performance packet filter engine on the network adapter can be used to fight off any DDoS attack that makes it to the server. Furthermore, this engine scales to support more than 10 million packet filters with very low overhead on packet discard and pass-through. All packet drop decisions are made by the network hardware and drivers. Let's take a moment and look at the totality of what SolarFlare offers in the security space. First is a high-performance network adapter offering up to 80% lower latency with time stamping capability in the nanoseconds versus microseconds. As a packet filtering engine, it can prove throughput to systems under attack by 500%. Finally, our packet capture technology plugs directly into a wide range of security products in use today, from Snort to BroIDS, Suricata, Wireshark, and most other LibPCAP compliant applications. Let's first take a look at the Solar Secure Packet Filtering Engine. Here we have a collaboration between the network adapter and software driver running on the host to filter and discard unwanted network packets long before they reach the OS or your applications. Let's take a look at a SYN flood attack. Here attackers send a system a SYN request. Under normal conditions, your server's OS stack processes that request, dedicates the network resources, and sends it back an ACK, an acknowledgement. The attacker doesn't process the ACKs, they just keep storming your server. The Solar Secure Filter Engine actually handles the ACK, and it's only when the requester responds to the ACK that the OS and system resources are actually consumed. Over 30% of the cyber assaults happening right now utilize this attack vector. Solar Secure masks this from your server. Furthermore, Solar Secure supports black and white list based filtering of IPv4 addresses and port combinations, along with filtering on a variety of IPv4 headers, some payload contents, and HTTP headers. Finally, Solar Secure can rate limit inbound connections so previously unknown attackers can easily be throttled to ensure that they can't seriously impact your system. I'm going to demonstrate this now. Here we have a complete example, one of many from the Solar Secure User's Guide that shows a configuration file for setting up a rate limit filter. I'm not going to walk you through all the code, but I'll focus on the really interesting part. The filter engine enters this pseudo microcode at the start underscore rate underscore limit tag. First, we assign the inbound packet to an instance of an object, P1. We then test P1 to see if that address has sent in more than 10 packets in the last 10 milliseconds. If it has, the register R0 will be set to 0, which is the default for rejecting a packet. Then the jump underscore if underscore not conditional tests R0, and if it's 0, it jumps to rejecting the packet. It's that simple. Nginx is a high-performance derivative of the Apache web server designed to handle hundreds of thousands of requests per second. This server has no firewall running on it, so its performance is in green. With Solar Secure added, that performance is in red. What we can see here is that the number of good connections per second that can be supported is directly related to the number of attacking connections. Note that under no attack, with only good connections, this server application supports 40,000 users. But as a DDoS attack picks up and it reaches 100,000 bad connections per second, only 15,000 good connections, those from your customers, can be supported. Therefore, two-thirds of your server's resources are being used to fight off the attack. At the same point, the Solar Secure Filter Engine is still actually fighting off the attack and all 40,000 good users are still able to connect to the system. In fact, it isn't until we reach 120,000 attacks per second that the server sees any impact at all. This figure shows the improvement to the system under load where Solar Secure is used for request level filtering. Eventually, the blocking has an impact on kernel processing and system performance will degrade. In this example, we enabled IP tables on top of Linux, both without and with Solar Secure, and here you can see a significant improvement in system performance. With just IP tables, Nginx can support all 40,000 customer connections, while IP table filters off the first 750,000 bad connections. 
add solar secure to the mix, and that number jumps to 2.3 million bad connections per second before customer performance is impacted. This is a substantial difference. We mentioned that the solar secure filter engine can filter based on a list containing up to 10 million entries. This is an example of how one might integrate an external threat intelligence list, say Norse's dark list, into solar secure. When you receive Norse's updated dark list, you can easily print down to the threat level your company considers its threshold, then shape that list into a simple IPF column structure, action, like table insert, a label, the IP address slash port, and reject or accept. It's a fairly simple list structure. Taking this one step further, you can also craft a whitelist that only permits certain IPs on specific ports to talk to a server on a given interface. This would allow you to dedicate the first 10G interface on your web server for internet traffic and assign a blacklist filter, an HTTP request filter, and say a rate limit filter. Then on the second 10G interface, you define a whitelist by IP address and port that only allows your database servers and admin workstations and servers to communicate with your web server. This would prevent any sideways attacks from other systems within your infrastructure on your web servers. On your database servers, you may want to whitelist all ports to ensure that only validated systems admins actually can gain access to these systems. Now let's explore a customer using the Solar Secure Filter Engine, Cloudflare. In this example, three types of systems are hitting your web server. Good visitors, web crawlers and bots like Google, and nasty attackers. If we take and use DNS to put our web server behind Cloudflare, they then mask off all the attackers so they can't gain any access to our website. Furthermore, Cloudflare has 29 points of presence worldwide, so my content resides in their content delivery network and is served up with awesome performance regardless of where the visitors are worldwide. Here we have Michelle Zaitlin, co-founder of Cloudflare and head of user experience, talking about SolarFlare. So performance is one of our key value propositions. A key input to performance is latency. And so with the solar flare cars, the low latency means we can process more packets per second, therefore leading to better performance. When one of our customers come under a SIN flood attack, this happens daily at Cloudflare. Um, when we test with solar flare cards, we can see that the solar flare cards can handle 16 million um, packets per second versus what we were using before, which was about 9 million packets per second. That's a 180% improvement. That's a big deal. Again, if we're in the business of providing um, security against any sort of attack, partnering with SolarFlare means we get better performance and security for our customers. We have 24 points of presence today. So that's today. You know, if we look at, we're gonna be adding another 50 points of presence over the next year, and when we talk again in two years, we're gonna be at 1,000. We really do spend a lot of time obsessing over what the network design should look like and who we should be, what hardware we should be running out at the edge. And we've partnered with SolarFlare because we absolutely see them integral to our success going forward. Now let us talk about network packet capture. Solar Capture is the only PCIe Gen 3 ASIC vendor providing a wire rate packet capture driver available on the market today. This means that you will have the same solution on affordable 10G and 40G adapters capable of ingesting packets at wire rate. Add to this application clustering, mirroring, and packet replay, and you have a very complete solution. Furthermore, for those seeking lossless packet capture at minimum packet sizes and with the desire to manipulate packets prior to ingest, we have AOE Solar Capture that runs our FPGA-powered application onload adapters. Here we show how Solar Capture works in very simple terms. Packets come in off the wire to our adapter at stage 1. They travel through a thin firmware interface on our ASIC adapters to the Solar Capture driver at stage 2. At this point, Packets can go in one of three directions, directly to the libpcap interface for applications like Snort, to our extensions interface, which I'll talk about in a second, or finally to our disk writer, which then writes out to a libpcap file. Here is our extensions interface. As packets enter stage 5 in the prior diagram, they come into the light blue solar underscore capture section of this diagram. You can then have your own C or Python applications consume the packets, or have them passed on to the libpcap interface. It should also be noted that each network interface on the card supports sending all the network traffic to up to two different end-user applications, and both could be libpcap programs. So for example, both Snort and Bro IDS can receive identical traffic from the same network interface. 
Taking this one step further and demonstrating Solar Capture's maturity in this space, we support application clustering. This enables you to run, say, 16 different instances of Snort, and Solar Flare uses its receive side scaling capability to distribute flows across these Snort instances using a four tuple hash algorithm. Essentially, a hash of the source and destination addresses and ports. This ensures that any given flow always goes to the same Snort instance. Remember also that we can do this with two different applications at the same time on a single interface, so both Snort and Bro could be leveraging, say, 10 cores each on 24 core system. That's power. So in summary, when it comes to 10G and 40G Ethernet network server adapters, SolarFlare should be your high performance choice. We deliver packets with the lowest latency, highest overall throughput, and under attack will deliver three to four times more traffic than our competitors. With regard to packet capture, SolarFlare has 50 nanosecond timestamp accuracy on packets, both entering and leaving the adapter, as well as wire rate capture, app clustering, replay, and wire rate injection. If you'd like to learn more, I'd strongly suggest taking a look at our user's guides. Drop me an email, schweitzer at solarflare.com, and I'll be happy to send them to you. Thank you for your time.